and welcome back to Fantasy Nuts. This is the What's Next series. Tonight I'm joined by Sam Andrews. He is at SamRam47 on Twitter. He commissions some uh, great redraft leagues, all different variations. They're a lot of fun, so go and give him a follow. Sam, how you doing, mate? Yeah, all good. Yeah, just mi- missing missing the NFL desperately. Wanting to start many leagues, but trying to resist. Yeah. It, it it always happens when it just finishes, doesn't it? Everybody gets that that bug to uh, jump in more and more startups. And in 2020, when no one had anything else better to do, yeah. I, I think everybody was really oversubscribed then. But yeah, fighting the urge as well. Yeah. Anyway, tonight is what's next for Russell Wilson. So we all seen him below his best last season after a big money move to the Denver Broncos from Seattle. It was only the third time in his career that he finished outside of the top 12 for fantasy football. And it wasn't great to say the least, you know, a head coach got fired and things like that. But we're going to talk a little bit about what's next for him. So Sam, what what do you see from Russell Wilson next year specifically? Um. I, I think we're going to see a, a, a bit more of a the old Russell Wilson. He might not be necessarily as quick or, you know, as – well, he'll, he'll still be a moving quarterback is what his sort of style is, but I think we'll see a, a much better Russell Wilson than we did this year. I think, you know, I think when you look at the way he played towards the end of the year, he was starting to show a bit more of the old Russ, but, yeah uh, – when you see, hear some of the horror stories coming out about Hackett, I think you can kind of understand why, you know, Russell didn't do as well this year. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Russ is getting older. It's a natural thing. He's getting less mobile. The scrambling's still there a little bit. Um, do you think Sean Payton coming in as the new head coach, how do you think that will affect Russell Wilson? Because last year was a shit show with their whole staff it looks like and that's not going to help him on his first year with a new team yeah I, I mean if if you believe sort of some of the stories especially that we've just recently heard that you know Russell Wilson was given a, a, an office space on the second floor and and all of this I, I think Peyton always comes across as quite of a you got it's my way or the highway top sort of character and I think yeah Sometimes going into a, 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 I suppose, a franchise that's in a bit of a disarray is a bit unruly, I suppose is probably the best word for it. He's likely to sort it out and to bring that sort of no-nonsense sort of crap to them. Um, and I, I mean, you hear stories that obviously Russ wanted Peyton to replace Carol at, at Seattle. So, you know, there must yeah. be a, there must be a... Maybe he has had some influence in bringing Peyton to the Broncos. But, you know, I think the likelihood is I think Russ has a lot of respect for for Peyton and that might be a, a potential upturn for him and, you know, a potential upturn for the Broncos next year. Oh, yeah. I mean, exactly the same uh, sort of level of respect he had for Pete Carroll there in Seattle. I think it's there, there was no structure to the Broncos last year from... Nobody led from the front, like not on the field. I mean, um, Sean Payton will come in and shore up that shop, if you like. And it will, I, I can see it being a lot better, maybe not as good as we're used to. Like only three finishes outside of the top 12 in fantasy football. But even if he doesn't quite get back to the top 12, I think he'll be knocking on the door around there. But um, let's have a look at some of the players that, are around Russell Wilson, his weapons, if you like. What do you think of Greg Dolchich? Now, he emerged in a sort of a short spat, didn't he, over about a three-game span, um, straight off the IR, pretty much. Yeah. But everybody hyped Albert O before last season. And Russ hasn't supported a top-12 tight end since 2017, when Jimmy Graham was in Seattle. And I, I was, say, calling him Albert No, not Albert O most of last year, and it didn't pan out. Dolchic looked okay. Do you see that changing for Russell Wilson this season? Will he be able to get a top 12 tight end? 
Uh, no, <laughs> quite frankly, I don't. I, I like Dolchich. I think he's a very good tight end. I think, you know, in a in a system maybe with a younger quarterback, you know, like a, maybe a rookie, someone like a Kenny Pickett, he would benefit entirely um, from a system, uh, a system like that. But Russ is... I want to say there's a level of arrogance to Russ that he likes to make the big plays. I mean, he used to use Lockett yes. so much in Seattle. And obviously when they brought in DK, it was there was a little bit of... Well, I don't want to say issue with DK, but again, it was that those big splash plays that he wanted out of, out of DK. And, you know, when you, when like you say, when you look at sort of the, the tight ends he's had in the past, he's barely used them. And I mean, I think, was it last year... Everett was brought into um, was brought into Seattle, and what well, I'm in Russ's last season was it Gerald Everett? I think it was. Was it Gerald? Uh, I think it was Gerald Everett. I think he went from the Rams to to Seattle, and then went from Seattle to the Chargers. But I remember it was it was, it was Gerald Everett. Yeah, it's forgettable yeah. though, isn't it? Because it wasn't <laughs> well, that still. I mean, he he barely got used. He was a he was. He was he was a very well used sort of tight end at the Rams, and he was a very well sort of used sort of tight end at the Chargers this year. Um, and he's just been completely forgotten about when he was at Seattle. Um, so yeah, I, d- I don't think Russ likes using tight ends. So I think that's gonna. <laughs> I'm not saying that Dolchich isn't a potential tight end twelve to a top tight end, but yeah, it's. The system doesn't suit him. It, in most leagues, if you if you're not picking up a top twelve tight end, you'll be able to get someone off the waiver wire and things like that. Anyway, but back to the point of Russ not supporting one since Jimmy Graham. Those three years, uh, twenty fifteen to twenty seventeen, those three seasons, Jimmy Graham was a top twelve tight end all three. But he could have been a top twelve tight end with any quarterback in that span because yeah. he was that good. Um, Let's talk about the rest of the pass catchers anyway, because we, we actually got into it a little bit in a group chat this week, didn't we? And yeah. we kind of both agreed that Jerry Judy was the sort of wide receiver 1A with Sutton as a 1B. Mm-hmm. Um, Sutton was slightly less efficient this year, but very similar amount of targets. Sutton had 109, Judy had 100. They both played 15 games because they had little bumps in the road with injuries. But the main thing was... Jerry Judy was the wide receiver 22 overall, whereas Sutton was 21 places lower. Mm. What do you see from next season with them? Do you think it's going to be the similar sort of thing? Jerry Judy is the 1A or? I I, I think that, I mean, I, I, as like I said in the group, I think Judy is going to become the out and out wide receiver one for them. And I think Sutton's, the only way that I can see Sutton potentially getting big points is if he starts using Judy early and people then double up on Judy and then he has to use Sutton, he has to use, you know, his his running back core, which I I think we'll we'll probably come on to it, but it's going to be interesting for next year. Um, So if, if, if we see Russ from Seattle, the Russ that we, we, we know, he'll have Judy as his DK and he'll have, Putting it as his locket. That's the way yeah. I see it going. Yeah, I, I mean, I completely agree with it. We we both agreed, and I thought at the time uh, when we were talking with a few other lads that, that this is going to be a boring show, to be honest, because we're just going to agree with each other about everything. Yeah. But um, now, Jerry Judy very quietly had a good year as well, just under a thousand yards. I think it was 962 he had over them 15 games. Um, some go in and that was with the team in the state. It was Sean Payton comes in there, gets a bit of Michael Thomas sort of out of him, you know, them sort of slants and things like that go in. And like you say, Sutton will play that more Tyler Lockett, that big explosive role, them sort of 40 yard completions and things like that. Yeah. I, th- I think it'll be useful him get the, if, if he, I mean, I don't, I'm not sure on sort of Patrick's, um, contract situation but I mean he could be he's another option they missed I think big mm. last year and I think if yeah. he comes back and he's fit and they can get him mixing in I think he could play a, a good part as well yeah Tim Patrick's a funny one I mean he, he'll likely be going undrafted as well this year um, 
take a late stab on someone like Tim Patrick, especially if he's still in Denver as well, because he has talent. And the way the wide receiver room is with those two guys is erratic as hell. And he's going to have some sort of value there, definitely. But um, yeah, we mentioned Russ is getting a bit less mobile with his age and things like that. So let's talk about the guys who run the ball there. Well, really, there's only one to talk about now, Javonte Williams. He's rehabbing well. Um, he looks a little bit ahead of schedule for returning and things like that, which is great news. And it's also great news for Russ. Looking at what Sean Payton done with Alvin Kamara in New Orleans, where he had Drew Brees, who wasn't mobile at all. Mm. Um, it's going to be, it could be exciting. And Javonte could finally live up to that hype. Yeah, I... I, I mean, I've I've always been a, a massive advocate of of Javante Williams. I haven't been, I've had him in a lot of leagues. My concern is that they're, I mean, I assume that Latavius Murray is probably not going to be returning to the Broncos. Chase Edmonds, I don't particularly rate him. I, I, I really do struggle to see where they go in terms of their running game, especially with, I mean, Williams. Yes, he's he's great. I have major concerns over his health in terms of can he maintain that level on a constant basis? I mean, it's a big injury that he got. Will he come back? Yeah, yeah I think it could be interesting. Yeah, sometimes after them sort of injuries, I think he had the ACL and MCL tear, which, you know, it's awful. And sort of like their first year back, lucky, well, it wasn't lucky for him, but saying lucky for him that it was early in the season that he could return for the start of this season but they're never the same player sort of the first year after Mm. especially with running backs you know they rely on their legs a lot they don't they're not running in space a lot of the time they've got to run through people bigger than them Mm. and but Peyton will have some things schemed up there without a doubt in my mind He, he used Alvin Kamara brilliantly in the passing game a lot with Drew Brees and it will just be interesting to see. I think the only other um, running backs in contract there are Chase Edmonds and maybe Mike Boone. Mm, that, so that, there's not Chase Edmonds has bounced around a lot. I mean, he's he is exactly what he is. He's a journeyman. He's not going to do anything better than that. No, I don't think I've seen enough of Mike Boone to even have an opinion on him. To be honest, <laughs> um, again, he may be one that, depending on how the off season goes, he could potentially be a nice pickup in very, very late. It's not in deep leagues, potentially as, you know, as a potential late pick. But I mean, you could, you could, they could even start to see maybe someone like KJ Hamler be brought into the backfield to do similar to what Brandon Powell's mm. done this year for, for the Rams, you know, those sort of screen plays and all sorts of those sorts of plays that could be interesting. But yeah, I, I, I worry for their running back core as a whole but yeah it's going to be an interesting off season free agency opens very soon um less than three weeks now i think actually something like 19 days or something till nfl free agencies open and we can see what they get cooking but that is it for this edition of what's next and it was what's next for russell wilson sam tell everybody where they can find you and what you're up to mate um, so yeah, you can find me on um, uh, on my t- on Twitter. Um, I am going to be starting to post a, a bit more coming up, you know, in the next few years. So that's uh, Sam Ram forty seven. Um, and if you're ever interested in any sort of variation redraft leagues, just hit me up on there. We've got plenty of spaces going, um, and there'll be new leagues being set up as well. So just hit me up on there. Yeah, they're they're a lot of fun without doubt. And one thing quickly before we jump off this recording, shout out to IDP Iggy. It's the first time I've got to wear this on a stream since taking down his division in 2021 in the FF7s. It's an IDP charity league um, in support of Kawasaki disease. And it's a lot of fun. 16 team leagues, half IDP, half offense. Really hard to take down, was chuffed when I did. But yeah, shout out to Iggy. He's a great guy. And that is it. Until next time, 